Good morning, God's beloved, and welcome to online worship at Lee Summit Christian Church. We are grateful for your presence with us this morning on this fifth Sunday of Easter. We invite you, if you're comfortable doing so, to let us know you're with us by sharing comments in the comments section, or you can share this video with a friend or family member. You might find it also helpful to find a candle in your home and light it this morning as it reminds us of Christ's presence as we worship. You can also find common elements in the home, something small to eat or drink, as we will share in communion together later in worship. No matter how you found your way to us this day, please know that at Lee Summit Christian Church, you are always welcome. Let us worship together. Each family is unique and has certain dynamics. And sometimes it makes it challenging to figure out who we are in relationship to our relatives. I hope you know that you are welcome as part of this family, that we are sisters and brothers together, that we are connected we are connected through God's spirit of love and welcome. And I, for one, am grateful to know that we are gathered together in worship today as family. I know that there are many joys and concerns that we carry with us, not just today, but throughout the week as well. And I want to invite us all to take a few moments to share those with one another and to share those with God. Will you join me in prayer? God, we thank you for this time of worship together. I thank you for the ways in which you have connected us as family. I thank you for this opportunity to share our joys and our concerns with each other. Some of us are carrying heavy weights that weigh us down, that occupy our minds. God, in these moments, I pray that you would help us to find ways to lighten the load, to share our grief, our struggle, our concerns with you, knowing that we don't have to carry these alone, and to share them with each other through Facebook or a telephone call or maybe even a letter in the mail, to know that we have each other in these days to help us carry whatever it is that we are carrying. Some of us are filled with joy. We see the changing of the season, the, the flowers, the, the life of spring, and we are filled with joy. Help us to find moments of rest in that joy and to find ways to share it with our family, our friends, our neighbors in the ways that we can. As we continue our worship together today, I pray that you would help us to be reminded of the connection that we have with one another and with you. Remind us that we are not alone. Remind us that we, we have each other as a family of faith so that we might make it through this challenging time knowing your love, your grace, in even greater ways. We continue to hold in prayer those first responders, those caregivers that are working so hard to keep us safe, the community safe, and each other safe. God, we thank you. 
for this family of faith. May we find ways to continue to share your welcome, your love with each other. We pray all these things in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray saying, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then Jesus went home. The crowd came together again so that Jesus and the disciples could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying he had gone out of his mind. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my mother and brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Would you pray with me? And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each heart be found acceptable in your sight, God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We are surrounded by the illusion of perfection. Everywhere we turn, we see the perfect family. Look how they get along. The perfect vacation, where it never rains and the airplane is never delayed in Chicago and the drinks are always cold. The perfect body, no blemishes, no hair out of place, always a smile. The perfect job, flexible, hours, plenty of benefits. In many ways, they are illusions. They are never-ending rabbit holes. They are the mirage in the middle of the hot desert. And yet, we seek them. Several weeks ago, at the beginning of the stay-at-home orders, I was feeling sedentary and anxious. So I suggested to Katie that we do a workout video. Now, I clearly heard myself say, workout video, singular, as in one day, as in this is a one-time thing. Now, she heard me say, workout video, as they come in a series, as in this will last every day for three weeks, as in it was cute that you thought that we were going to do this only once. And so every day for the past three weeks, I have done an exercise video. And I can't help but notice how perfect the people in these videos look. Washboard abs and chiseled arms. They're smiling the whole time and instead of gasping for air like me, they don't really sweat as much as they tastefully glow. Their makeup is done and their hair is styled just right perfection, glaring at my imperfection. While browsing for recipes, I saw this ad in a magazine. Now trust me, I've done enough baking with my kids to know that it looks nothing like this. That kid isn't crying. Those parents aren't red-faced and anxious. That kid hasn't dropped a raw egg in the floor. Stress-free cooking starts here? Well, it ends in my kitchen. I've received lots of compliments on how cute and wonderful my kids are in the worship videos. Thank you for that. Last week's segment was especially cute as they helped me in the kitchen baking bread for communion. We look like the perfect family, don't we? You may have even thought to yourself, wow, 
Man, I wish we could do that with our kids. What a practice of bonding. What a display of faith in action. Now what you don't see is me bribing my children with treats and goodies to do the video because, well, they're not interested. Then pleading and bargaining with them because they don't want to wear the matching shirts like I want. Notice you never see my face in the video. So you never see me stress out when one over-enthusiastically pours water in the bowl and it splashes out, or when I raise my voice to end a squabble between the two. You can't see me furiously scrubbing the oven doors so you'll think that we're clean, or frantically organizing the counters so you'll think we're tidy. The illusion of perfection. We only share our picturesque moments with the public if we can help it, don't we? The digital camera, it allows us to take 200 pictures and then share the five good ones. Social media allows us to curate the lives we want others to think we live. We don't post our down moments and our meltdowns. We don't air the dirty laundry of our failures and shortcomings. So when we see these illusions of perfection that others project, we feel guilty when we don't match up. My family isn't perfect. Now what? Thankfully, a walk through the scriptures reminds us quickly and frequently that there is no such thing as a perfect family. Adam and Eve, they get off to a rocky start. Cain murders his brother Abel in a jealous rage. Noah gets drunk, loses his clothes, and curses his son. After the birth of Isaac, Abraham and Sarah kick Hagar and Ishmael to the curb. Jacob tricks his brother Esau out of his birthright. Laban swaps daughters to be married on Jacob. Joseph's brothers sell him into slavery. And all this mess happens only in the book of Genesis. And the quest for the perfect family will not fare throughout the rest of Scripture either. But what about Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith? What about that holy family, Mary and Joseph? Wouldn't it be safe to assume that Jesus' family has it all together? Well, in the beginning, Joseph finds out that his fiancée Mary is pregnant before their wedding and under questionable circumstances. So he plans on dismissing her quietly. As the Gospel writer of Matthew tells it, the family flees political persecution as refugees. As Luke tells it, after Jesus is born, they sacrifice birds in the temple for Mary's purification because they were too poor to afford a lamb. And not too many verses later, Mary and Joseph will lose the preteen Jesus at a festival, traveling a full day before noticing he's gone. Have you ever lost your kid somewhere? This is not exactly the picture of perfection that we might hope for or expect regarding the Holy Family. It doesn't get much better. In this morning's text, Jesus is beginning to catch some flack for his teaching and ministry. And if we would assume that blood is thicker than water, and that his family will come to his unwavering defense, we would be disappointed. Verse 21 reads, When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. Jesus' family isn't going to try and persuade him out of what he's doing. They seek to physically restrain him. Not because they disagree with his teaching, not because they're uncomfortable with his ministry, but because they agree that they think he's gone crazy. My family isn't perfect. Now what? Where are we supposed to turn for the model family? Well, you know that the short answer that in life and in Scripture, there are no model families. 
but there are examples in both places of broken, atypical families coming together in unconventional ways to be family together. You don't have to be a perfect family to be a loving family. For many years now, I've followed the social media page, Humans of New York. In 2010, the photographer Brandon Stanton set out to photograph 10,000 New Yorkers on the street in order to create a catalog, a snapshot of sorts, of the city's inhabitants. Brandon writes, Somewhere along the way, I began to interview my subjects, in addition to photographing them. And alongside their portraits, I'd include quotes and short stories about their lives. Ten years and 20 million followers on social media later, the project continues. I would encourage you to look it up. It seems like every story shows how to be family amidst the brokenness of our world and the illusion of perfection around every turn. In reading the stories over these past several weeks with Mother's Day on the horizon, I've been especially drawn to stories about motherhood, like this one. The interviewee, a young woman, writes, I lived with my biological mother in Moscow until I was nine years old. She was a very bitter woman. I remember loving her despite the dark moments, but she neglected me and abused me. Eventually, my father was able to win a court case and brought me to live with him. It was my first time on an airplane. I was so fascinated with everything. When I got to his apartment, I had my own bedroom. And there were two little bees sitting on the bedside table, a mother bee and a baby bee. They were a gift from my father's wife, Elena, and I still have them today. I call Elena my mom because I don't like the word stepmother. It's not enough. She was so patient with me, and even though I was a troubled child, I was quiet. I mainly kept to myself. And during that first year, I bit her so many times that she had to wear long sleeves. But my mom was never unfriendly, never violent, never abusive. When she got angry, she always made me feel like I had value. Our 20th anniversary was on April the 2nd. She's been there for all the heartaches. She's shown up for all the big moments. And all I've ever gotten from her is love. Mom doesn't tell me much about her life before me. I know she always wanted to be a mother, but married my father too late to conceive. But whenever I ask about it, she doesn't go into detail. She'll just tell me that I'm the only child she needs. And there are hundreds of stories like these. Not always about families, but usually so. These are not stories of perfection. They're stories of fitting broken, ill-fitting pieces together until they find a new wholeness. Your family is not perfect. My family is not perfect. Even Jesus' family isn't perfect. In fact, in today's scripture, they are the outsiders. Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you, the crowd says. Who are my mother and brothers, he asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my mother and brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. We often use familial language in the church. We often describe our building as a home and our congregation as a family. And that's fitting because families are messy. If you're imperfect, you'll fit right in here with us. Our family has found a home here. You have held our children, prayed for them, and dedicated them. You've taught my children the stories of faith. 
When our kids have theological questions, Katie says, go ask your father. And I immediately say, go ask Reverend Kelly. You, as a congregation, as a family of faith, have taught my family inclusion. You've taught us hospitality and grace. You've modeled compassion and generosity. When our family experienced loss, you were there with prayers and meals and calls and your calm, non-anxious presence. And I've witnessed you countless times do the same for one another. In the beginning, God called creation good, not perfect. In the beginning, God called humanity very good. Again, not perfect. If you're looking for perfect people, you keep looking somewhere else. If you're looking for a place to seek the will of God as best we can, picking each other up along the way, then you're in the right place. You're in the place where love is served. When Shelter in Place first started, we had high hopes and the best of intentions. We came up with a schedule for our kids, and it lasted about two days, then devolved into more screen time than we'd like, and we felt like failures as parents. We've had to give ourselves a ton of grace. I hope you're giving yourselves some too. Last week I hit my shelter in place low. And I was getting unnecessarily short with my kids. I was becoming unhelpfully critical of my wife. And instead of giving it back to me, which I deserved, they all gave me the space to reset and then the grace to welcome me back into the fold again. I said, thank you. They said, we love you. And God said, it was very good. Thanks be to God this day.
morning, church. Happy Mother's Day. I'm sure many of you are missing our communion table at church. I know I am. Our house has changed tremendously in the last several weeks. Our kitchen has become eighth grade learning science and history, and our music room has become fifth grade social time and lots of learning going on there. But the one thing that has not changed is our, ki our kitchen dining room table. It is the place that we gather together for dinner each and every night and sometimes lunch and breakfast too because we're here together all the time. Right friends? It's a lot of togetherness for some of us. But the one thing that hasn't changed is that we still share this time together and we love the time that we can come together as a family. So this is the time that we come together for communion. Just imagine being at that table the last night of Jesus's life there as his disciple, him sharing stories. I wonder if there were jokes told and I wonder if they were as funny as some of the dad jokes shared at our table. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took the bread, he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Likewise, he took the cup, he blessed it, and said, this is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of all sins. All are welcome here at this table, and for as often as you eat the bread and drink from this cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he returns. Bless you all, and I miss you dearly. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning, church. It's great to be in worship with you this morning. As we come to the offering, I just want to share with you about a cool story I found out about, about how two of our young people who know they don't have full-time jobs because they're still in school, are still being generous and giving and cultivating that spirit that Jesus invites us to every day. Let's hear their story. Hello, my name is Anastasia Gibbs. And I'm Victoria Gibbs. We have been making masks for the community. Thank you, Anastasia and Victoria, for the ways that you're helping during this time. And thank you, congregation, for the ways that you have been helping in so many ways as I've talked to many of you on the phone. May we continue to be generous in our time with one another and helping each other out during this season. And just remember that if you'd like to make a contribution to our church, there's two options right now. You can either write out a check and send it to the address listed below. Or if you'd like, you can go to our website, www.lschristian.com and click on the donate button and follow the instructions there. Thank you so much for the way you continue to be a hope and light to so many. Let us pray. Loving God, I give thanks for this wonderful congregation and the many ways that they're making a difference. Pray that you continue to help us to practice generosity with small acts of kindness and helping hands. Bless us, O Lord, and bless our community. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends, it has been a joy and a gift to worship with you in this way and at this time. 
We hope that you will continue to join us in the coming weeks ahead as we continue to worship and be the church together in this way. And now, we prepare to change the light, knowing that the light of Christ does not go out, but that it only changes, so that the light that was in this place at this time might go forth to be in all places at all times. Go in peace. A service has ended. Our ministry now begins.